Welcome to Beauty and the Biohacker, where we explore the latest tools and trends in self-care, aesthetics, and peak performance to help you live your most beautiful life from the inside out. I'm your co-host, Rachel Varga, a board-certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011 with over 19,000 rejuvenation treatments performed on thousands of patients. And I'm Katie Moore, a self-proclaimed biohacker with three years of self-experimenting in the space of health and wellness technology. I'm on a mission to help you achieve success without sacrificing your health or happiness through my YouTube channel, Katie Type A. So join us as we sit down with some of the biggest innovators in the health space, the movers and shakers of the wellness world, and unpack some of the biggest secrets in the skincare and longevity space. We are Beauty and the Biohacker, and we're thrilled to have you along for the ride. Welcome everyone, we are so excited. We've got an amazing episode for you today. We've got my friend, neighbor, and all around fantastic mushroom fun guy, Benjamin Lillybridge is actually here joining us in the Beauty and the Biohacker podcast today. Just give you, give you a little bit of kind of a backstory. So he is the founder and fun guy of Hawaii-based functional superfood. Their company is called Malama Mushrooms and they they were actually founded right here where I'm living right now in Kona, Hawaii, while Ben was living in a mango tree and utilizing a lava formed cave on the property to basically grow the first fruits of this business. It's just so wild to me how far you guys have come, but uh, he started off as an agriculturist and an environmental scientist, and then basically refocused his efforts on helping educate people on the benefits of medicinal mushrooms. And we're gonna get into all of those benefits today. I am so excited. As a quick side note, he also runs a nonprofit called the Hawaii Fungi Project, and they're doing some insane work here. They sequence, map, monitor, all these undocumented mushrooms that grow right here on the Hawaiian island. So Rachel, I am so excited. We have so much to talk about in terms of benefits of mushrooms, skin health, all sorts of things. So yeah, welcome, Ben. We are thrilled to have you. Aloha, everybody. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Katie. Well, thank you for this fabulous chaga superfood cacao mix. It's fabulous. I am super OCD about formulations and literally the stuff mixed in a breeze. Uh, thanks, Biochem, for making me hypercritical of formulations. So <laughs> you nailed your cacao. It's absolutely delicious. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, we have and your nice... chocolate. Wow, yeah. <laughs> I literally ate that within five moments of getting my package. <laughs> yeah, that's a common review. <laughs> much to our inventory uh, issues. <laughs> I mean, I think it's actually a great place to start. I was going to say let's start with the history of Malama, but I think let's just jump right into kind of some of these other natural ingredients that you include in your mushroom blends? Because I think that is something that's, you know, certainly not unique to the mushroom space, but you guys tend to pick things that are Hawaiian based, you know, honey, cacao, Kona coffee. I'm just kind of curious, you know, for people who are shopping around for different mushroom supplements, like, are these things actually synergizing to help with some of the mushroom potency and benefits that they that you're trying to get from something like chaga and reishi yeah no great question um well let's just start with cacao and chocolate um because that's a you know probably the longest history of one um chocolate and mushrooms have actually been combined for thousands of years the the mayans and aztecs actually were combining chocolate and mushrooms and it it makes a lot of sense why, aside from cacao and chocolate being superfoods themselves, having many medicinal properties, super high in iron, minerals, antioxidants. It's also a vasodilator, so it opens up your blood vessels, improves circulation, is good for the heart. But ironically, that helps with drug delivery. And by drug, I'm speaking of just uh, medicinal compounds, whatever they may be, because it helps uh, the compound be absorbed into the bloodstream much easier. Obviously, there's a societal benefit that everybody loves chocolate, or at least most people do. And so it kind of lowers the barrier of entry for people. But yeah, so cacao is a great one for that. Um, coffee, 
obviously we just we want to support our Kona coffee farmers out here so that was a, a pretty natural one to combine um, and the, the third one we always are combining is honey too which not to go too far down the rabbit hole but you know there's some ancient depictions first depictions of psilocybin mushrooms of magic mushrooms were with um, associated with bees and honey and there's some really interesting synergy happening there between bees, mushrooms, and honey, even in nature. Um, and honey itself, again, is a superfood. There's actually nootropic benefits. It's good, actually, for the teeth, ironically. You would think sugar, it's not, but it's actually a lot of studies that helps with dental care. And Rachel, up your alley, you know, topically, honey's great for the skin. So there's all sorts of benefits to honey and these, these other superfoods, and they're all synergi synergistically beneficial with mushrooms as well. So yeah, any way we can just improve the user experience, both in terms of taste and also delivery of the mushrooms is better. So that's kind of the thought process there. Amazing. Why don't we just get this out of the way first? Y'all can take mushrooms without getting high. I personally do not microdose. It's not really on my path. I mean, I say that now. Uh, so it's just, you know, whatever floats your boat, right? No judgments here. Um, so just so you know, what I'm taking, I am not getting high as a kite right now. And I'm not about to hallucinate like five, 20 minutes. I'm having some fabulous cacao. I'm getting the benefits of chaga. Why don't we just start with talking about some of the benefits of chaga? I've, I've definitely experimented with lion's mane with my sleep scores. It definitely helps with that. So just expand on chaga and, and, uh, and lion's mane, those are huge. Yeah, totally. Well, to your point, yeah, these aren't uh, the psilocybin hallucinogenic mushrooms. Uh, biggest question we always get from a new user is, are these magic mushrooms? To which we always reply, well, all mushrooms are magic, but no, as Rachel pointed out, these won't get you high, uh, at least in a hallucinogenic way. They might give you a, you know, a buzz in terms of like deep focus or an increased wellness, um, but they, you know, are legal and are FDA approved and like studied by modern science and or you can pick them up at your natural health food store. So it's all legal ones we're referring to here. Like we call them superfood mushrooms. But to get into the, the specifics about like what they're good for is chaga that you're drinking, which probably grows in abundance where you're at up there in Canada. On it, it grows on birch trees. And it's actually it's a it's not technically a mushroom, but it is a superfood fungus. Um, we sometimes just call it a mushroom for ease of education, but it has a lot of historical use in East Asian culture, as well as Northern tribes in North America. And it's very high in antioxidants. If you ever see it, it's actually this like black growth on the birch tree. And the black is actually melanin, which is the same compound in our skin that reduces our um, exposure to UVA rays. Um, so when you in ingest that internally, it actually can be like an internal sunscreen helping with skin exposure and topically as well as i'm sure we'll get into later it's a it's a phenomenal topical skin care um, scrub moving down the line just real quick you know lion's mane has so much history with it showing that it helps with cognition and brain health um, there's actually a double blind placebo controlled randomized control studies showing showing that it helps with uh memory and cognition reishi which is actually i got a real specimen here is this hard conch like mushroom and it's called the mushroom of immortality. It, it has so many benefits. The biggest ones we highlight is it's very useful for stress, fatigue, anxiety. But honestly, if you look at the studies, there's hundreds and ranges from immunity, antibacterial, antiviral. I don't know if I could say that. Um, all sorts of other things. I mean, there's there's at least 200 of these you know edible mushrooms out there that technically have medicinal use. But uh, those are kind of the, some of the ones that we find people are most attracted to and most looking for and that we kind of put forward in our offering. Yeah. And with the, you know, rise of companies like Four Sigmatic and, you know, there's so many now like Instagram ads of all of these different like mushroom elixirs, obviously mushrooms are having a big moment right now. And what I've seen in health trends is things come and go. And I'd say it's probably been a good five years that mushrooms have continued to rise almost like kind of like this whole idea of Bitcoin where you're like, okay, it's going up and it's going up and it's going up. And are, you know, where do you think this trend is going? Are we just going to you know, continue to find and source new mushrooms? Do you think it, mushrooms are going to kind of take on a, a, you know, 
a different sort of landscape itself where it's going to kind of become its own food group? Like just out of curiosity, where do you sort of see things going? Because you're, you have your ear to the ground with a lot of trends in the industry right now. So I'm just super curious what your thoughts are. Yeah, that's a great question, Katie. I don't know where it's going to be honest, but I guess just like looking at it, um, like reflecting on it as it's happening in the past few years, I think a big thing to remember is, you know, we're, we're remembering these things, you know, these, these are ingrained in our culture and our civilization, though Western cultures forgot them as, as we have been a little detached from all sorts of plant and herbal based medicine, you know, I think we're, we're realizing that there's Western med is amazing and has like many things to offer us, but there's something intrinsically found in raw nature that provides us with so much that can't be recreated in a lab, something more holistic and comprehensive. And mushrooms and fungi in general are a, a huge um, key, like keystone of that, of that movement because for whatever reason, they're some of the longest living creatures on earth, fungus, you know, and have just subtly and humbly been underground for most of civilization and only pop up a little bit to to share their benefits with us and yeah i think we're just re slowly remembering that this is a tool for us you know our ancestors thousands of years ago were utilizing these things and we're slowly re remembering all right so i've been taking notes um a couple of things i'd love to add to in regards to skin and aging is yes i actually do work with a warming honey cleanser which is great we can link that nice. up and yes antioxidants are really key there's even a, a skin brightening formula that i personally take so that i don't burn in five minutes going outside i have not had a sunburn this entire summer and i've had you know a fair amount of sun exposure so yeah taking antioxidants through your cacao, your, your mus mushroom extracts is a brilliant way to reduce oxidative stress. So that's going to make you age slower and reduce things like inflammation on the skin, your red acne scars sticking around for much longer, things like that. And like with the news, we need to know the source of our mushrooms. So don't be buying this stuff off Amazon or eBay or um, kind of getting lured down the rabbit hole with those Instagram, Facebook, social media ads. I see this all the time with skin supplements and hair supplements and skincare products. Who knows what company you're supporting? So go straight to the source. So we're going to have some links for you guys to get your hands on this stuff. And yeah, I just wanted to add that because with trendy things, imitations will come forward. So uh, Katie has done her research to find you and which is why we're sharing uh, you here on the show, Benjamin. Awesome. And just to your point too, circling back to the skin health too, the antioxidants and the things you mentioned, um, I guess this is a good time to talk about the polysaccharides and mushrooms and their benefits, if you guys are okay with that. Um, Let's take it away, Ben. I okay. was going to bring up mycelium, <laughs> but I think we're going to go there first and then okay. we're going to come back to the whole mycelium thing. So guys, if you, if you know what we're talking about, we're going to get into some controversial stuff in just a second. So. <laughs> Stay tuned. Uh, but yeah, let's let's talk about polysaccharides. Let's talk, and also you guys have a great blog post, which we're gonna post on our website as well, just to to link it because it's a really cool face mask. And I'd love for you guys to talk about the kind of brains behind it. Awesome. That would be very cool to link to that. And actually what I'm about to chat about is like directly related to that. And actually I believe is included in that article. But pretty much uh, the cell wall of mushrooms is made out of a substance called chitin and it's the strongest natural polymer that exists you know, plants are made out of cellulose mushrooms are made out of chitin spelled c-h-i-t-i-n kind of looks like chitin but um and chitin is is bound up by polysaccharides which are very beneficial compounds they're starch and they uh aside from activating your immune system they actually can help keep your skin hydrated too both internally and topically. There's actually been a study with a mushroom where the polysaccharides, specifically the beta glucans, which are unique to the fruiting body, as opposed to the mycelium, which Katie will be priming in a second. It actually helped with wound closure. Um, and they it did it through the actually creation of collagen in the body. So the increased beta glucans from polysaccharides increased the 
collagen. So polysaccharides are like kind of the key component in mushrooms. And each mushroom has its own kind of unique flavor of things like lion's mane has arenaceans and hericeones, which help with the brain. And cordyceps has cordycepin, which helps with energy. But all of them generally have polysaccharides. And, you know, to Rachel's wheelhouse, these help with skin and skin hydration. So, yeah, I just wanted to put a flag right there for that just to finish up your point, Rachel. And yeah, we have some really great DIY face masks on our blog that Katie mentioned that have these mushrooms that you can apply topically and scrub off later and get the benefits as well as ingesting internally. Awesome. So let's dig into some more skin stuff. Hey, let's utilize the power of nature to make us look like gods and goddesses. <laughs> so when we're talking about skin health, I actually work with two serums. It's the Super Serum Pro Health Advanced Serum. These actually contain antioxidants as well as polyporous umbilatus extract. Do you, are you familiar with that extract? What, what do you like about it? What do you like about what you're offering to in the space mask? I want to get into this. Yeah, so we don't use the polypores in ours, but and I'm not too familiar with that one. But if it's a mushroom, I got to assume it has polysaccharides in it and it probably has uh, beneficial skin, you know, constituents to it. The one that's often used in topical skincare is the Tremella fusiformis. Have you heard of this one? It's uh, also known as like the white jelly fungus or the silver ear, but it's really cool. It actually holds, it's similar to hyaluronic acid. It holds like a thousand times its weight in water. Um, so when we find it wild, it grows wild in Hawaii, we'll like rub it on our face and stuff. And um, in powder form too, if you add water, it can rehydrate it and make a good face mask too. Well, you know, I'm going to be ringing you up for mushroom <laughs> extracts because I'm in the process of making my own products. Oh, no and way. I love the idea of supporting uh, someone like yourself, grabbing your extracts. My sister's a farmer, actually, and we're going to be doing our own essential oils. So it's going to be super exciting. Just out of curiosity, like what should the kind of ratios be? Is it, you know, it, it, is there kind of like a recipe for success for brightening or, or acne clearing? Like, you know, use more tremella than chaga, use more reishi than this. Like, how do you guys go about, because I know all of them have polysaccharides, but if tremella is the best, like, what is it about that particular one that, you know, you might want to use it for X, Y, and Z? So I just would love to know kind of like your thought process behind, you know, this, the skincare ratios when it comes to making your own masks at home with, with your products. Yeah, that's a great question. I, I don't feel totally equipped to answer that just because we don't necessarily offer a skincare product. So we haven't done crazy amounts of formulation, like looking at like, you know, what ratio of tremella for like this desired function or this ratio of chaga and so on and so forth. All my like biggest thing is the chaga, most herbalists use it specifically for um, kind of like severe skin damage from the sun, like for example, melanoma. Like I know many herbalists that have applied it topically to the skin to like actual white melanoma marks and have like kept it covered for weeks on end to get rid of the melanoma. Whereas Tremel is definitely more, um, it's obviously restorative, but it's definitely has more of a history as a beautifying agent dating back to, I believe, the Tang Dynasty, like 710 AD, there was a, a famous um, Chinese empress who was like the most beautiful in the land and like constantly credited Tremella as her, her source of beauty. So that's kind of my my quick response to that. I I know we, we throw in a bunch of other useful things like jojoba oil, rose hip, rose hip seed oil, and vitamin E and all that jazz. And I'm sure a, a skincare formulator would have a better response to that, but I'm kind of just a high level mushroom guy. I freaking love this concept of using it to make your skin better, but what goes on gets absorbed systemically. So how cool is this? You could be applying it in your skincare, but also reaping the medicinal benefits. And just to FYI, what we cover here is not medical information. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guise of a licensed physician. This is educational informational purposes only. I am looking forward to this rabbit hole. Where I'm just being honest here. <laughs> Speaking of kind of going down a rabbit hole, uh, and since you are kind of the my like number one mushroom guru, who I <laughs> basically will like just like randomly email and be like, "What is what is this?" Like I, you know, when we were first collaborating, that I I was actually really overwhelmed by the number of 
mushroom labels that, you know, say mycelium grain or mycelial grain or this and, and then fruiting bodies extract or, you know, and, or combination of both. And so Ben actually walked me through what those big differences are. And for consumers listening and thinking about getting mushrooms, like they're not all made equal. So I think Ben has a really good, like, understanding of what those main differences and I'd love you to kind of take the floor and really talk through like what that is and why should consumers care because there is a lot of different pro like mushroom products out there and I just want to make sure that people are conscious of where they're spending their dollar a quick like mycology one-on-one -on -one. The mushroom is the fruiting body of the fungal organism. All mushrooms are fungus, but not all fungus is mushrooms. So, you know, fungus that makes like beer, kombucha, or grows on moldy bread and oranges, like that's a fungus, but that's not a mushroom producing fungus. Mushrooms are a separate class, um, but so specifically within mushrooms, the mushroom is the fruiting body, similar to like the apple of the apple tree. Um, there's a whole other part of the organism, typically out of sight, at least in the wild, that you don't see. It's called the mycelium, and it's this like white thread-like structure. Just yeah, very webby. And if it, it's you know, how the mush mushrooms and like trees and all the nature stuff communicates. Exactly. Like, neural it's, network. If you exactly. Will. It's a, it's crucial and pivotal to ecosystems. Like trees and plants are communicating underground via mycelial pathways. They're sending signals, sharing nutrients. The mycelium is actually mining rocks, you know, eating the, the dirt to give minerals to the tree and in turn the tree is photosynthesizing and giving sugars and water to the mycel mycelium and fungus and ultimately the mushrooms. Um, so it's a very uh, hit like, yeah, very crucial component of ecosystems. You know, if a mushroom is growing on a tree, you don't see it. But within the bark, there's a whole mycelial web, you know, decomposing that tree and in the ground. Similarly, there's mycelium and will produce a mushroom. So. Just Would you quick... call that like the wood wide web or something? <laughs> you might if you oh have my a good sense gosh. of humor. I that wish that I really good. no, I wish that I came up with that, but I know I definitely saw that on the llama Instagram one day. Yeah. <laughs> Credit yeah. where credits due. Back yeah, to you, we ben. and we didn't make that up. We probably got that from someone too. We're not that clever. Um, but... Dude, it's like the Higgs boson field, but for the plants, right? Exactly. Totally. If you guys know about that research with CERN, LHC, super nerds yeah. out there, y'all know what I'm talking about. It's like this um, invisible network. Yeah. And it's so cool. It's this, like the mycelium is like the, the physical like thing of it that you could see. So check it out online. Search it. It's so cool. Yeah. It's like the particle accelerator collider thing. I don't know. I'm not a physicist, mycologist. Um, but anyway, so yeah. So just like full like myco 101 course, like there's mycelium in the fruiting body. The mycelium is beneficial it has medicinal components similar to the fruiting body in some cases the fruiting body creates things the mycelium doesn't and in some cases the mycelium creates things that the mushroom doesn't however there is a lot more there's way more scientific studies as well as historical traditional use based on the fruiting body which makes sense like we've only been able to really grow mushrooms I guess like in a lab setting with to get clean mycelium in the past like 200 years so it's kind of a new um, advent to humans. Certain companies are selling just the mycelium grown on the substrate, which is typically grain. Um, that's what's necessary in, in lab settings to grow mushrooms. However, there's an issue that you cannot separate the mycelium from the grain because it's just, in, it's eating it, it's entrenched in it, it's decomposing it, it's all tangled. Um, so what's done in since they're processing it, they're just drying that Mush mycelium grain block, powderizing it and selling it as mushrooms, uh, which isn't the case. Again, mycelium does create beneficial things. The issue is that these powders are 60 to 70% the grain substrate they're grown on and 30 to 40% the mycelium. Um, so I guess there's just like a transparency issue there because they're claiming it's mushrooms or at least just not being totally transparent that, you know, the majority of the product is grain, which um, yeah, is, isn't too genuine in itself and also, you know, it's for those that can't have grain or like, you know, doing the keto thing that's kind of not in line with their diet and lifestyle choice. Anyways, and most grains are hugely genetically modified now. So you're probably eating GMO organisms, pesticides, all that stuff. So the source really matters for this stuff. 
hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. So that's kind of our shtick is that we're a hundred percent fruiting body with our powders so that, you know, there's enough mycelium on grain products out there that we're just doing a hundred percent fruiting body to offer something high quality that people can use. And, and that's, that's the niche we're, we're filling in a sense. Uh, ben, wh what's your take on why certain companies would choose to do mycelium on grain versus the fruiting bodies? Like, is it, is it money? Is it scalability? <laughs> is it just easier processing? Like, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I, I can't speak for them. I don't know. I, I, there certainly is a monetary incentive. You know, if you were an apple farmer and you could just sell apple trees, you wouldn't have to wait for fruiting seasons. It really wouldn't matter. The quality of the apples, the pest in the apples, you could just, you know, sell the tree. It'd be a lot easier business. Yeah. I don't know if there's a bit of, they, they really want to believe that the product is superior because again, mycelium's awesome. Uh, the issue is that it's mostly grain that they're selling. So yeah, Katie, I, I don't know. It, it's kind of heartbreaking, but, and, and I don't want to speak for them, but hopefully more info will come out on, on their intentions later on. My instinct is lab created mushrooms are going to be like lab created meat. It's going to miss out on that key life force of being in nature and like being actually involved in like the wood and the soil networks and all of that. There's going to be a lot of enzymes that are going to be, going to be missing in those actives and uh, life force and all of that. So it can get esoteric and it can also get very enzymatic. That would be mm. my guess as to some of the key differences between lab created mushroom on grain versus um, sourced in nature. Yeah, I think we're going to be learning a lot more, especially, you know, you guys mentioned the mushroom industry is like really kind of blowing up right now. I think, you know, similar as what we saw in other industries like cannabis, you know, a lot of people are starting to probably put money into it and a lot of research will come out and maybe we'll come to a little more clarity as to what are best practices down the line. But in the meantime, we're just sticking with what the science says and what history and traditional cultures that, you know, started this movement have founded and i can attest like ben is a legit forager like if he didn't have to work on the business side of you know the you know building a, a mushroom business and sustainable like you would probably be out foraging or like speaking to people because you also are an educator and so like talk to us about how you are able to blend the business side of selling mushroom products with going into nature and actually finding these. And I know a lot of it is through your kind of, you know, the project that's really close to your, your chest, which is Hawaii Fungi Project. So that's your nonprofit that you are helping run to basically look at all of these new species of fungi that have just popped up here on the islands randomly. And you're helping work with a team of scientists to really kind of figure out where they came from and, and kind of get like actually document them for future foragers. So tell us a little bit about your mission here and where you see this going and, and some things that you've discovered so far. Cause the last we talked, like there was some stuff going on with the chicken of the woods and I want to hear, <laughs> I want to hear where that's going and what you guys have been able to find. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess just to provide context for anybody new to mycology and mushrooms, which, you know, probably most of us joining maybe only 7% of the world's fungi have been discovered. So of all the superfood mushrooms we're talking about, all the mushrooms you see at the grocery store, there's only 7% that we like know well, we know the names, we've given them, you know, publications and names. So there's still 93% out there that have left to be discovered. So it's a really exciting field that even a common citizen that like anybody listening could make a monumental discovery without really having any expertise in the field. If you have an iPhone, you can discover something, take a picture, you know, it hits a network of local mycologists. If you upload it to, you know, your local mycology Facebook group or app and uh, who knows. So there's a lot of potential out there to make key discoveries. And within all those, or I guess within that 7%, we have so much medicine discovered. You know, the superfood mushrooms talking about, lion's mane, reishi chaga, but even larger pharmacological things like penicillin. M most people aren't aware that that's actually a fungus. And that actually like revolutionized Western medicine as we know it when it came out during World War II. So I'm very much excited by that prospect. You know, 
I guess like most kids, I thought space was, you know, a crazy, miraculous, like never ending thing growing up. But come to find there's like so much we don't know here that are just growing in our backyards. So Hawaii is the most isolated archipelago in the world and has a very high rate of unique and endemic, meaning species that are native and only found in Hawaii that occur here. And mushrooms and fungus in general just haven't received that much attention here. And there's been a little bit of work done, but there's still so much to do. We have like a high level overview showing that there's probably 200 native and possibly endemic species that have occurred here, but that's kind of where the research has stopped and no one academic or private institution is carrying the research further. So seeing the need for it and having a personal interest in it, I wanted to create a project that could um, further the research. So that's what the Hawaii Fungi Project is. It's solely dedicated to the study of the native and other wild mushrooms that occur here, um, getting our arms around the names and taxonomy, and, like getting publications out in the papers, and then hopefully one day moving up to the next tier, which would be looking at them for biochemical, novel biochemical constituents, you know, medicines. And that's my main interest. And maybe one day that will combine with Malama mushrooms where one of our findings can be incorporated into our line, but it'll probably be years down the line. So that's kind of Hawaii Fungi Project in a nutshell. Let's take a moment to acknowledge that you get into the woods to forage, <laughs> right? And for myself, at least once a week, I'm about three hours out of cell reception. In the Land Rover 4x4, I saw a bear the other day, I saw a donkey, I saw two elks, <laughs> a frog crossing the road, very random animal totems, I'll tell you that. But for you as a business owner and myself as well, getting into nature is really, really, really key for grass rejuvenation. And also that's when I get my best creative hits. So maybe without realizing it, you're in the woods and you're getting these like, okay, sweet. I got to talk about this more and which is really cool. And so you, you must enjoy your off-grid foraging and the benefits of the time that you have with as few EMFs as possible without really thinking about it. And y'all know I'm going to become a master forager here on my off-grid day. So uh, stay tuned for that. And I will certainly be reaching out to you to make sure that what I have forged is not going to get me high as a cake or send me to the hospital. So I, I, I have your email. I, I text Ben all the time. I'm like, can we eat this? Can we cook with this? And he's like, no, poisonous. Put it down. <laughs> like when we start foraging, do we have to be careful with even like touching it? Like with the spores and everything? Like when you're first starting, okay, we gotta be careful <laughs> with this round of work here. But, uh, you know, we want to educate people that might be starting to get interested in, oh, can I get, we need to do a whole episode on this. I'm just going to stop this. I'm going to stop this. this is <laughs> well, a let, me, let me just I answer that. <laughs> I, keep it going. Keep it going, Rachel. This is so yeah, bring it in. She's going to have her own in. Instagram account. Like, look what I charged today. <laughs> Uh, y'all know i'm gonna be making like tinctures i'm actually getting Let's a go. distillery to do essential oils know. and can you use those same things for doing your mushroom extracts too yeah absolutely yeah Amazing. not not many people are <laughs> doing just dis, like distillations of mushrooms but there's definitely a, a few people out there doing like polysaccharide concentrated Sweet. like extracts via distillation yeah my um, sister's a farmer i'm gonna be giving her some extra work let's go <laughs> <laughs> But just to answer your question for anybody that was like, wait, yeah, can I touch mushrooms? Yeah, there's no uh, no reports of anybody ever getting sick from touching mushrooms, even if they're poisonous. But definitely never eat anything you're 300% confident is uh, edible, non-poisonous species and always confirm with uh, expert. Please don't send it to me. Um, <laughs> there's many, uh, but uh, there's many, like most places have a local Facebook group or I really love the app iNaturalist. If anybody hasn't heard about it, download it. It not only helps with identification, like it has a very good like AI system, but it also uploads to like other people in your area, other naturalists can help make the identification. And even then I'm not recommending you eat anything that's, you know, identified on there, but it's a really cool app. and. Just going back to the citizen science thing, is it's a really cool tool for citizen science because, boom, you don't know what that thing is. Someone identifies it. And now we have a, a data point of like, you know, reishi occurs on oak trees in this park behind Rachel's house. You I know, got tons like of oak and cedar literally like here. 
You're in and, the spot. You're definitely in yeah. the spot. Yeah. My husband, he's a he's a master forager. I know we we're going to talk a little bit about him because you like uh, BJJ as well. Brazilian yeah. Jiu-Jitsu in case you're like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> let's just keep, let's just clarify that. So yeah. quick clarification question. Okay. iNaturalist or seek by iNaturalist? Which app is it? Um, iNaturalist. Uh, yeah. With the bird? Yep. Yep. Seek okay. by we'll iNaturalist. We'll throw that see- in the show notes. Yeah. Yeah. Seek I'm by giving Gabriel some work to you. Uh, competitor that's piggybacking off their name. <laughs> oh, I have a that. really kind of random, but I think I think I've actually maybe asked your sister uh, Amanda this at one point, Ben. And I want to kind of turn the tables on you. When you're forging, there's yeah. a sense of kind of awareness, intuition. Do you find that you are better at being a forger when you've actually consumed medicinal mushrooms <laughs> beforehand? <laughs> Or does it really not matter? Are you just so in tune with with nature now that it like doesn't even phase you? That's a great question. I don't think I have a control study on that because I believe I'm always on some sort of mushroom when I'm out there, <laughs> superfood or otherwise. So I guess yes is the answer. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. I also think this is a great segue to talk about that you guys are also a family business. And I don't know if Rachel knew that, but like he literally works with his sister. And I think your fa- your mom's involved, Malama oh, yeah. Mama or something. Yeah. yeah Malama Mama is very involved. Yeah. yeah. So what what inspired you to like, because I love my family, but I literally <laughs> never work with them. Like what inspired you to kind of create a sustainable business model? knowing that like you were going to have your family as employees like how hard is that yeah i mean i definitely didn't do it intentionally i think uh i just eventually hit a point with my entrepreneurial endeavor that um i was just desperate for help and luckily enough my uh my family is the best at what they do at, at those like things that i needed help at like my sister you know creative marketing social media um and my mom you know keeping me in line accounting um so she's uh both those two things and also my dad's like he's he gives me a lot of really good advice he he was in um agriculture businesses for a while so he's yeah he's he's quite the the wise soothsayer yeah so i didn't do it intentionally and and to answer your question of how is it is it hard and yeah it, it can be hard but it also it's 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 amazing because you know we spend so much of our time working it's it's great to you know be also checking the box for family time on that too. Though sometimes it'd, it'd be nice to have more compartment, like, you know, compartmentalization. Like my mom calls me more often about business than to just like check in. So that's kind of uh, annoying, but uh, yeah, that's, that's the answer there. Well, that's where you can like then have your jujitsu time, right? Like that's your time. Unless your family is also doing that with you too. Yeah, I, Cause I know Rachel and her husband do it all the time. <laughs> so I guess, you know, it, it, it's, but it, it, I think it, it really speaks to like the, what the idea of Malama is, right? Like it's, it's about love and, and kind of this, like, you know, I, well, I'll let you explain in your own words what it is. Cause I think it's absolutely beautiful, but like having moved to the big Island now I've been here for almost a year uh, from California, they, there is a spirit here of family, of nurturing, of mm-hmm. guidance, of love and care for one another in that community aspect. And I think it's sort of just like fitting that the llama started here and has now expanded to include your family too. I think it's beautiful and really rad thing that you guys are doing. So why don't you just tell our audience for anybody listening that maybe isn't familiar with, you know, kind of some of these Hawaiian terms, like what does Malama actually mean, you know, realistically and what, what does it mean to for you? Yeah. Great question. Thanks for the setup. Yeah. I probably should have explained that. Um, so malama is the Hawaiian word for protect, preserve, and nature and nurture. Mushrooms, malama us, obviously, in all the ways we've talked about. And then we're trying to malama mushrooms here in Hawaii with our Hawaii fungi project. So it's just kind of this uh, this beautiful word that just means to um, yeah take care. And you know you can malama aina, which is aina's land, so take care of the land. But yeah, if in this context, it's it's about taking care of ourselves with mushrooms and also taking care of the mushrooms that are largely being overlooked in our society. 
I'm so excited to start foraging with my hubby. And Katie, I know you work with your fiance. I work a lot with my husband. Yeah, sometimes we have our families help each other out. And this is kind of the future. A lot of us are moving more to the entrepreneurial space. And uh, those are like some some gang signs there, Katie. That, that, was, <laughs> that, was, that was literally just me trying to be like, we are all stuck at home. <laughs> I like to put positive spins on things. <laughs> and uh, I'll give you some tips for how to have a little extra fun with your fiance while you work. And sorry, Benjamin, Ooh. these won't apply for you. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we, In, we involving can... the llama mushrooms or no, <laughs> no, not okay. involving. We can this write is a blog like, post on it. Let's do this it. is <laughs> like married working together tips. Keep it things fresh. Keep it things exciting. Ooh, I think my, um, my chocolate mushrooms kicking in. <laughs> my God, what's <laughs> happening? <laughs> <laughs> well, this We're is like wondering hard Rachel. Edit it's this one. Yeah. What, wait, Ben, what did you put in her? <laughs> what is going on? Got the aphrodisiac special. Oh, I took a bunch <laughs> of the pictures. They're, it's just lines, man. This stuff helps. Oh me no, you didn't well. do that just now, did you? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've done it before. I thought it was great. <laughs> well, this is good vibes. This Goodbye, is so though. much fun. And I know that we're coming up on the end of the hour. So I think it's probably a good time to wrap up before things go get really out of hand. Yeah, maybe. But <laughs> just so uh, listeners know, we do have a very special exclusive discount just for this audience. If you guys want to pick up some Alama mushrooms, you can head over to our website. It's going to be in our favorites page along with the show notes here. B ampersand b15 is going to get you 15 percent off so you guys can try it for yourself and yes get some of that chocolate i'm actually going to go probably buy some today yeah. um because <laughs> i've been dying for that and yeah i mean what 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 goes better with you know nice mushrooms and chocolate and coffee and you guys just have the work so um ben anything else you kind of want to just say i mean i feel bad because we probably need a second follow-up one to just go over you being a biohacker too like he's also yes. like he does cold therapy he does hot <laughs> therapy like and he's a surfer jujitsu like he does it all so just kind of give us a brief like wrap up of like what you're most excited for, like coming to the end of the year and um, and anything else you want to kind of give our audience as a takeaway. Oh, oh, man, most excited for I mean, we're we're uh, we're in busy season right now. We just moved big commercial spaces. And um, yeah, I'm just excited to kind of settle in more and dig in onto these projects. Honestly, like I feel like we're just beginning and I'm super excited. Um, I feel like we're getting a strong tailwind right now, you know, collaborating with people such as yourselves, like awesome entrepreneurs. And yeah, I'm really just really excited to be cross pollinated through this like symbiosis and shared community network with people such as yourself. So yeah, honestly, uh, my life's pretty much encapsulated by all the things you just mentioned. And I just look forward to digging in deeper and furthering my practice through mycology and the other arts that you mentioned. So yeah, that's kind of it. I feel extra fabulous right now. I <laughs> I can almost like taste the high vibeness uh -huh, in your. Yeah. I'm not even like I'm super sensitive to this stuff, and like yeah. I feel I feel awesome. I feel happy. I feel clear. I feel a little bit silly, and um, yeah, thanks for making great products that mix really well. And everybody, head on over to beautyinthebiohacker.com. Check out our favorites page. You'll get a special promo code, special link to share, which obviously helps us all out as well. And what a fun episode. I look forward to our follow-up. Yeah, this was awesome. Thank you guys so much for having me. Anyone? Yeah, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions aside from random mushroom pictures. Uh, Malama <laughs> Mushrooms. Malama, M-A-L-A-M-A. -A -A, um, Instagram, Facebook. They also are like That's blowing it. up. Like they have a huge Instagram following. You guys like have to check out some of their stuff. They've got, they always post really amazing videos and content and educational too. And I just want to say one last side note before we go. Every dollar that is spent like on a Malama mushrooms bag, 5% of those proceeds go towards your nonprofit, Ben, the Hawaii Fungi Project. So that's just another thing to like get you guys super juiced about. Like, I think that's an amazing endeavor and I'm excited. I support you guys because that's something I believe and I love what you're doing to kind of just, you know, further sustainability. And so if you guys are like, how can I help? This is a great way. So just go buy a bag of Malama mushrooms. <laughs> and the awesome. chocolate. Before oh, we buy it all. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> true, true, true. Add to cart. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Ben. And uh, we, yeah, we definitely are super appreciative for your time and everything you're doing for the space. And thank you guys for tuning in. We will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you guys so much for tuning into Beauty and the Biohacker today. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave a comment or share it on your social media account and we'll give you a shout out. And don't forget to head over to beautyandthebiohacker.com to check out all our episodes and our favorites page where we include our curated list of products with special discount codes just for you guys. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter because we're sharing some exclusive content and giving ways you won't want to miss.